What is going on everyone and welcome to Toy Shop Fab and on this video I need a break. No I need brakes. I need brakes because this truck right here does not have any. Uh, yep, corn cob here. My 59 GMC pickup truck does not have any brakes. And if you saw our last video, <laughs> if you saw our last video, we rebuilt a carburetor for this truck, got it fired up, got it up and running very, very well so far. Um, if you hadn't watched that video, go back and watch it. Make sure you like the video because if that video gets 1500 likes, Comment on that video done. That's all you gotta do. I will be giving that carburetor to you as well as a inline fuel filter, inline fuel pump, and two feet of 3 8 fuel hose to help you guys on your project. Like I said, that video, 1500 likes. Comment done if you hit like. That's it. But now, since this thing fires up and runs, see here. We need to figure out how to get it to stop. So, a while ago, when I started collecting parts for this truck, um, I was on, I've actually found this kit on accident. If any of you have one of these 59 pickup trucks or these old pickup trucks, you know that your brake master is down here on the floor. You gotta pull a little cover. There's a little tiny cap in there. You gotta take it out. Gotta put brake fluid in there. Brake pedals up here and it does some weird crossover linkage back around under the truck. And well, as far, they never really quite worked extremely well. I mean, they stopped, but we always strive to have better brakes. Anyways, so while I was out searching around for parts, I come across a couple of pictures and stuff and came and found uh, a kit on eBay that moves that master cylinder from under the cab on the frame to the firewall, which makes servicing and checking it much, much easier. And well, my red 59 still has the master underneath the floor and I've been wanting to upgrade with a kit like this, but this one doesn't have any. So we're gonna start with this truck first. Um, Here's what we got. What it looks like, see these two little holes right here, the way it lines up, it looks like it goes between the dash and this bracket here. It uses these two holes up here to help locate it. Puts the other end up on the firewall. And then once all that is there, I'm assuming you have to drill those holes out or to mount it the rest of the way to the firewall. Drill a couple more other holes out for your master. And then here is our brake pedal linkage. So we'll flip that around just like that. This guy will fit in there just like that. You can see that little arm will go to the master. Kicks your pedal all the way over here. So I'm going to grab some tools. I'm going to get what looks like to be the emergency brake or parking brake handle out, get that bracket off of our steering column and start getting probably some of that padding out of there as well. So we can get this piece in the truck and mocked up. So, and hopefully put some brakes on this thing before I go back to work. So here we go.
All right, got the steering column undone, got the emergency brake or parking brake out, had to go up front, pull it off the bracket on the frame rail so I can get the rod out of the way. Uh, saw there on the video, I had to pull the instrument cluster. Now that came out fairly easy. It's three Phillips screws and you just kind of, you got to wiggle it out because it is such a tight fit in there. And then you have the speedo cable and then all the little, the lights. There's like three light sockets that plug into the back of it. And then you got the water temp, amp, and oil pressure. Maybe something else. Hopefully I'm not missing anything. But we got that out of the way. And I pulled that because it would be a lot easier for me to get behind the dash. So let me give you a better shot of what I got to do. We got two bolts. There's one there and one there on the bottom of that whole bracket. Every And then, of course, the other two that were on the steering column. Well, they're behind this bracket as well. All half inch uh, bolts. But the rest of it, as you can see up here, I already started cutting, but it is welded across the top there. It's got three or four spot welds there, three or four spot welds there. And then there's one, I think two or three spot welds going down each side, just above those bolts on the bottom. Now I have my little air saw here, and what I'm doing is I'm cutting out what I can to get that out of my way to help give me a better a better access in there so I can get a drill or a little grinder or a Dremel tool or something so I can get on top of those little spot welds to get all of that bracketry out of there. And what it looks like is you got to cut all that out. And this pretty much recreates all that structure we cut out but instead of being sheet metal is this stuff here is about i want to say like an eighth inch thick so definitely uh, a lot stronger than the stamp sheet metal they have in there so but i'm gonna go ahead and finish cutting all this out get it out of the way get it cleaned up and i'll bring you guys back in give you a better shot of what it looks like and um yeah, so I'll be right back. All right, we're gonna see how this goes. I told you I was gonna come back after I got this out, but I wanted to, sh I, hopefully this sex side goes as well as this one. So I cut this guy out, right? I cut four pieces. Let's see, this goes just like this. This is where the steering column is. This would be straight across. So I cut the four pieces out to get this big chunk out of the way and all that just left each side like so it co connects from there to there and up up underneath the uh the cowl on both sides so all, all that is left is i'm going to show you so you can see just that piece up on top and it drops down to where the half inch bolt was and all the rest of everything whoops was cut out of the way to give us access so we can get there's a spot weld right there. That's the only one. And then there's three that run across the top there. And those, well, if you can see, they're kind of um, <laughs> a little bit more, a little, look a little difficult to get to. And I, that's why I'm hoping, and hopefully this works out for you as well, because it only has the one spot weld here and the three here. Um, I took uh, my vice grips, these guys here, and I'm gonna put this, to show you how it was. As it was up against the firewall there, I just grabbed this just like this, and then started wiggling back and forth. And it went and it popped. This weld here was the first one to break. And then these ones up here came almost immediately after. So I didn't have to get in there with a the grinder. I didn't have to get in there with a the drill bit or anything like that. And I'm hoping this next piece goes that way as well. And I'm going to have Seth record it. And hopefully it pops like this one did. And it works out for you guys as well if you plan on upgrading your brake system. So I'm going to go ahead and give it to, we give the camera to Seth. And I'm going to grab a hold of that other piece there. And uh, well, we're going to wiggle and see if it pops. See if the welds break just like these ones do. So here you go, bud. All right. I don't know if you can get in here and see, but here is that other piece. Let me, let me get this out of the way. Get this guy out of there. All right, so. 
can you see this guy right here? Down here. Right, you can see this? Yep. Okay. Let me get our button. There we go. I got that. Oh. It. All right. <laughs> this one was not as easy as the first one. And of course it wasn't because you can't, it, this one's harder to get to, right? The easy ones come easier and the harder ones are harder. That makes any sense. If you guys know what I mean. So, but anyways, that whole bracketry, all that is out. I'm going to grab my little hammer there, kind of square up some of the little spots. I did, however... There is a couple of little holes where these spot welds were at that I will probably have to weld up, I think. Yep. I can pull this guy right here. I can pull the wipers off, get that out of the way, pull all these screws. I can get in there, clean it up, weld those holes up from out here. So that's awesome. But I'm going to go ahead, take my hammer, kind of flatten some of that stuff out. Get that piece up in there. So, then I'll show you guys what that looks like. I'll be right back. Good morning. <laughs> nope. Good afternoon. It is actually about 1.30 the next day. So, but I got all that stuff cleaned up last night. Uh, got everything cut out off the firewall. Kind of tapped my little spot back where I accidentally pulled metal off where I got to weld it up now. And uh, we got the bracket installed and actually bolted up. I have to go out there. I'm going to show you what it looks like right now. I'm also going to show you that you probably, if you don't want to, you don't have to cut out as much as I did. Um, my belief was that that whole structure had to come out. But from after getting that in there, it doesn't. It looks like only about two-thirds of that has to come out. So you can leave. Matter of fact, that hard piece that I told you was hard to get to. <laughs> Um, if you cut that one flush, you cut the little bracket off for your e-brake cable and then cut all the way over and left that one little piece in there. Um, yeah, it's not in the way. But I took it out. It To me, it looks better. The, so that's what I'm going to tell myself. But you don't have to go as far as I did. So anyways, enough talking. I'm going to show you what it looks like. So from the top side there, you can see here's where it bolts to the original uh the original spot therefore our steering column comes through i'm going to change those bolts out and put uh put new bolts in there with washers and all that this is just to help me mock it up then you can see it goes down wiring harness goes up over the top there's that hard to reach spot, uh, piece i told you as you can see there it does not interfere with that part so that part probably could have been left in if you want this part however it interferes down at the bottom i mean you could have cut and left probably part of the elbow in there but I was already to that point, I figured let's just cut it all out. So now it's gonna get cleaned up, show you what it looks like here. So as you can see, there's our bar. There's where it goes onto the, or bolts to the firewall. Now, if you're gonna do this, here's a reference. See that line right there? The bottom of that bracket lines up pretty much with that line, so. And I'm telling you this because it is a tight fit for that bracket. As a matter of fact, now that I'm remembering, I'm gonna. We got it up onto the the two bolts up at the steering column there. I started those, got them snug, and it's a good thing I had Seth with me. I'm gonna show you what I had to do. 
So I got a bar, and here it is. Here is my pry bar right there. And you can see it sits, the end is on top of the steering rod or shaft that goes across from side to side and then goes right up. Let's see here if you guys can see. There you go. Goes right up against the top side there. And what I did was have them pull down on it, not right into the dash, but all down to where it about touched right there. You can see how close I got. And that is, and then I had to tap basically tap the bottom of it up to make it flush with our firewall. Then I drilled uh, two bottom holes, got those lined up so I can put bolts through it. And then once that was done, went ahead and pulled our bar out, drilled the other and got all four of them mounted. So you see the bottom of that line inside the truck, that's where the bottom of that bracket's gonna line up. Now the outside, here's another little guy here. My kit came with this little, it's like a pattern, but it goes right in the middle of this other body line, here and here. So what I did was I took a square piece of steel there and started hitting it with a hammer to flatten that line out. I left this here. This is not going to stay here. This whole bracket's going to come back off, but it gave me an idea of where I had to kind of like massage the firewall to get it to clear. I'm going to cut this hole out right there to that size pull that off and that is where these four bolts and this vacuum booster is going to bolt along with our brand new master cylinder now i originally bought the manual brake kit for that truck and when i got it and was measuring it i figured why <laughs> let's just put power brakes on it and be done with it because i am going to be upgrading to disc so Manual would work just fine for four-wheel drum, but since I'm going to do disc brakes and all that stuff, let's just upgrade it now. So I robbed that booster off of this truck. Yep. <laughs> so now that truck is stuck right there. I did order a new booster. Matter of fact, I'm going to order a whole another one of those kits because we're going to put Hydro Boost on that truck. I have all that stuff from that parts truck that we got a while ago. So... Big Red there is going to have Hydro Boost brakes now instead of the vacuum, and it's all going to go up on the firewall like our vacuum booster in this truck. So, but anyways, let's get back to this. I got to get that booster mounted, and then we'll get this master cylinder mounted. And here is our brand new master cylinder. Now, I like this whole cast iron look. I want to keep it. I don't want to paint it black. I don't want to paint it green. I want to keep this cast iron look. And I don't want it to rust. So, crystal clear enamel. You guys can see. Does not change the color. And I get to keep my cast iron look. And it's not going to rust on me. So, you know, I like that. So now, anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get you guys in the stand. I'm going to go ahead and get my hole saw out. I'm going to use an inch or, no, two and an eighth inch hole saw to get that cleared out. Probably going to have to go back over it with my carbide bit just to open it up. Yeah, uh, but no more, no bigger than that circle. Then we'll go ahead and pull that. I'm going to pull this guy off. Use it to make a gasket out of some gasket material I got from our auto parts store that way it has a nice good seal against our booster and that firewall so uh, but before I do that let's get you in the stand and let's start cutting out that hole All right, brake booster, master cylinder, and our little proportion valve is all installed in the truck. Also went ahead and just hooked up the little rod to our pedal. This guy's gonna be helping here real quick because we're getting close. So, but as you can see as the booster comes through the firewall there in our little bracket, it just has this little, what do they call them, clevis with a pin. So now it's pinned to our 
brake pedal, which is now sticking up. That is fully adjustable so you can get your height wherever you need it. So that is cool. We now have a brake pedal inside the truck. Also, also ran, uh, I installed our new rubber lines on these front wheels. I actually set myself up because I figured they're going to be a little bit of a pain and no, they came right off. So nothing exciting there. Just pulled the rubber lines off, swapped them over. Uh, the only other thing I did was I ran new hard lines from the passenger front and driver front up to our proportioning valve. So you see it just runs across the frame roll there. I got one of these on each side. Still have to go through, add a couple more. And then they split off. They both run up side by side up into our proportioning valve there. And you can see I've got fluid installed as well as our little bleeders. We do still need to bleed our master cylinder. And that is what Seth is going to do. He's going to get in the truck now. And he's going to slowly, repeat after me, <laughs> slowly, slow, say it. Slowly. <laughs> yeah. He's going to slowly push the pedal up and down for us to get our brake fluid running back and forth. That way we can get this thing completely bled. So, go ahead, buddy. There you go. I don't know if you can see the little uh, bubbles popping up. You can go a little bit quicker. There you go. Then we got the fluid coming through our little hoses. Once he's all the way down, he can let up. Now it's starting to suck fluid back into our lines. Go ahead. Yeah, gotta keep going to it so we can push all the bubbles out of there. Yeah, it's filling up. There you go. Now this is just a little, you guys, it's just a little kit there. They sell at the auto parts store. It's like $18, $20. Just little plastic fittings and some line. You hook it up to the side of your master there, and then you have uh, somebody pump the pedal for you while you sit out here and watch all these little air bubbles go back and forth. Now, sometimes it takes a while because you got to get all those little air bubbles out down there. And sometimes it actually goes fairly quick, but... Once we stop getting air bubbles coming up from there, then we know our master is bled. So I'm gonna have him continue pumping on that pedal. Make sure we get all the air bubbles out of that master as possible. Then I'll go ahead and hook our little lines back up to our proportioning valve there. And then uh, bring you back once we get ready to start bleeding the brakes on the front. Now I'm only gonna do the front the back is capped off. I do plan on changing that rear diff, and I didn't want to spend unnecessary money on new lines changing the diff out back there. I'm going to change the front too, but I want the front right now because I want to burn off those tires back there. And I don't need brakes back there to burn off those tires back there. I need brakes up here. So that is my plan. So but like I said, I'm going to go ahead. We're going to get all the rest of the air out of this master. Get you in the stand. I'm going to put these guys back on and then we'll start ble 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 <laughs> bleeding our front brakes. Now, be right back. All right, air bubbles are all out. Topped, uh, our reservoir is topped off. Our front brakes are topped off. Cap sat on there so he doesn't go squirting brake fluid all over the ceiling. Um, now we're on the co pilot side here and we're going to go ahead and uh, See if these things will bleed. Fingers crossed these wheel cylinders work. If not, I'll ha hopefully I'll have to order some, but I have not had the wheels off. I have not checked any of this stuff yet. I just put brake lanes on. <laughs> so, but anyways, go ahead, Seth, pump. You holding? Are you holding? Yeah. Okay, we got air. All right, go ahead, pump. Hold it. Holding. Right, got a little bit, a little bit squirting out. 
All right, pump it. Hold it. Holding. Pump. Hold it. Holding. Yeah, starting to get some fluid. Pump it. Hold it. Holding. Pump it. Hold it. Holding. All right, let's go to the other side. Turn the wheel the other direction. Definitely put some fluid through there. Got to top that little guy off. But we are still good. Didn't run it out. All right. Ah, fluid is topped off. All right, buddy, start pumping. Hold it. Holding. All right, it is the next afternoon. We got our master seal and everything mounted to the firewall of that truck. Got all of our, got our brake lines installed, got our brakes bled, and I thought we had some kind of brakes last night. Well, we did. We had... Um, one break and it only worked once <laughs> um i came out this morning with to pop this truck in uh push the truck out it wouldn't move uh made sure the transmission was in neutral nothing truck was stuck so last night the brake on the uh, co-pilot side worked the one time and uh this morning when i went to move this thing out push it out it would not move so what i did was i bumped the idle up a little bit shifted the transmission in reverse and it drug that one wheel all the way over to where you see it now i went out this morning hit a few auto parts stores and was able to find some wheel cylinders at my local napa and while i was in there i went ahead and cleaned up the backing plate Cleaned up everything on the back side there, rechecked and repacked our wheel bearings, took 180 grit emery cloth and cleaned up our brake pad surfaces. Make sure to knock all the grease off that and just scuff all the rust and the dirt that was off the inside of this drum there. There's that cap, there's our new pack wheel bearing. So that is what I have been doing today. It is actually mid afternoon now. I'm going to go ahead and put you guys up in this little stand here because, well, no matter how hard I tried, pilot side wheel is not stopping. And I figured if that one was, if I was able to get that one to work and only use it once and have it lock up on me, I'm not going to risk it. So I bought, of course, a pair wheel cylinder for each side. So now we're going to get the uh, pilot side off, see what it looks like. So. Get you in the stand. There we go. Ooh. See if we can get this wheel off here. Huh. But I was extremely happy. Extremely happy that our Napa had it. I went to uh, O'Reilly's first because they are the closest. They said they could get it, but it would have to be third party. And then I'd have to get a phone call. All right, and then they'd call me. Uh, it was just a lot of, it seemed like a lot of back and forth. So I went to AutoZone. Uh, AutoZone couldn't even get them. 
Uh, Napa is the farthest, furthest uh, auto parts store away from me, but they had these things in stock. They're like $26 or $27 a piece. So, totally awesome they had it. Allowed me to get these parts. That way we can get these things going. Oh, before I take this off, no. well, we're going to take it off. I'll show you guys our passenger, our co-pilot little cylinder. Like I said, it worked the one time and it froze up on me. So here is the one side, if you guys can see in there. It's got a little path in it. It looks like it moved maybe a little bit out and got stuck. This guy here, see all the corrosion and everything in there. So I know I said I wasn't, I, did, I didn't look at it. I knew it was going to bite me. I'm glad it bit me right here in the shop. And I don't have to worry about being or the truck being out on the road or having an issue with that out there. Come on. Let's get this. Ooh, get this dust cap off now. There we go. Pull our little cotter pin out. nut off here, a little castle nut. Let's move it out. Oh yeah, she moves. She's a little stuck. Oh, there it goes. So. Half. Get our bearing race off. So we got a castle nut, washer, bearing race. Now if you guys have never seen inside one of these old school bearings, Good idea, always wipe them off. Double check them. These bearings have been around. If they could talk, they probably have some stories. But Get yourself some good paper towels or good rags. Make sure you get them all wiped off, get them clean. But check that guy out. That's a neat outer bearing, huh? Actually looks like it's in really, really good shape. So... The other side was in that great of shape too. So I'm uh, definitely confident that all of these are going to be clean. She is dirty. Oh, huh. All right, let's go ahead and get our dust cover off. Now this guy here. I didn't get new ones of these, so we're gonna be careful getting it out. Just get a little, just get your pliers or something in behind the, in between the bearing. Oop, let's get you down here so you can see. There, so you can see what I'm doing. Just get your pliers in there and just kind of lift up on it. Don't get too out of control. And just kind of work it back and forth. Hopefully it'll come out. Oh yeah, it is. This one feels like it got bent. Guy in there. Yep. Well, this one's definitely a little bit more of a pain than the other one was. There we go. So, let's from the back side. Do I have room for that? This is like the other side. It's actually got like a little felt on there, which is kind of cool. There it goes. Try not to beat up on it too bad because I do not have another one. And I did not think to ask. Right. 
Jeez. Right, here is our dust cover. We'll can be fixed. I can fix it. See, there's that, and then right in here is like just a little piece of felt that runs across the race. That's cool. For the most part, though, it does not look like it is in too bad a shape. Looks like everything looks like it could be fixed pretty well. A couple little spots where I hit it, but no biggie. All right, that's good. Get that guy over here. Our new, our other bearing out. Yep, so, this bearing looks like it's in really, really good shape, too. Awesome. Okay, so now that we got those guys out of the way, let's go ahead and get our brake assembly off, our brake pads off. Our brake pads, well, they're a little thin, but there is plenty of meat on them, left on them to, you know, in order to do what it is I want to do with them for right now. Like I said, all this will be upgraded in the future, but for right now, I want to be able to move this thing around. I want it to stop. So, plenty of pad to do that. Now you can use, now the, you know, you got these two springs and it's always a good idea. Let's see. Let me get you over here a little bit better. There we go. Bring you, bring you down a little. All right, so, whoops. These ones are fairly simple. See our little adjuster down here. Take a note of how far it's out. We're gonna take all this apart, hit it with a wire wheel, clean it up, lube it. So just take a note that that is about, I don't know, roughly three quarters of an inch from there to there. So we can put that back where it is, get these pads out where they go. Um, and you can see we got the one spring down there. We got these two keepers here. Pay attention to how those are on. It's kind of like a beehive end, so the skinnier end goes towards the shoe, bigger end cord goes out towards the cup. And then we got these springs here. Now you can use a regular screwdriver to get them off, or pliers. I've seen people use picks, channel locks. I've seen vice grips, screwdrivers. I have this guy right here, and you can pick him up at Pretty much any auto parts store really i believe in their little tool section so one side you can see one end's got a cup and it's got that little end that sticks out there now that big gas guy right here see where these springs are at basically put that in over that that little end this guy right here you just put on the spring and you turn it and what it does is it go and just turn and what it does is it helps it pulls the spring up off that little pin and you can pull it off I bought this tool many 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 years ago so and you take that spring off it's always a good idea to do your drum brakes one side at a time that way you have you know a diagram on how things are supposed to go channel locks or vice grips on these two. I just use regular pliers, push and turn. Get those guys out of there. Push these pins out the back. Now if you're wondering, no, I did not get any brake hardware. I just took a wire brush everything. 
Um, they all look in really, really good shape. So I just took a wire brush and cleaned everything up. So now we've got those pins off. We got this guy off. We'll get a screwdriver behind him. Knock this little guy out of there as well. There we go. And now that that's out of the way, just kind of pull these guys apart. And move these over to the side for right now. We're going to come back to these. Like I said, I want to take uh, emery cloth 180 and knock, if you guys can see that, that is years and years of like built up grease. So we're going to clean and knock that stuff off. We're going to do that on both sides. Um, here now the brake lines I have they go they tie right into the back of our cylinder and it's just it bolts right it tightens up into this guy so there is no swivel on this end there is no swivel on this on the end up Let's see get you up here there is no swivel on this end either it goes through the frame and it has a clip on the back side to secure it so neither one of these ends turn which makes it kind of a pain to do this, but grab your wrench. What I did, just grab a wrench, grab your, and loosen your brake line up. Make it easy, right? So make sure your line is loose. Don't take it off, because all you're gonna do is just twist it all up, and that's not good for those. Just make sure it's nice and handy, nice and loose. Once that's loose, grab yourself your half inch or whatever size bolt is on the back of your wheel cylinder there. those guys pulled out so now that those both those bolts are out take your little hammer there and just kind of tap it loose now that it's tapped loose, because you broke this line, just loosened it up earlier, you can go ahead and spin your wheel cylinder off. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of pick this up for right now. Try to keep all of our brake fluid from leaking out right away. New wheel cylinders come with these new little copper gaskets. So, and then you guys, let's pull this end off. Oh yeah. And you can see what is in there. Dirt, sand, corrosion. So, definitely was not going to work. So now that I've gotten to this point, I'm going to go ahead and take a wire wheel, and I mean this guy right here, let me show you. We're going to go ahead and clean all of this up. We got just a little basic wire wheel on a drill, kind of go through and try to knock most of this dirt and rust out of here, especially on each one of these little bosses here or the pads area on our backing plate where our brake shoes ride. Definitely want to make sure those guys are all clean. That wire in here. Might as well knock some of the other junk out of there as well.
All right, so now once you got everything wire wheeled and cleaned up and sprayed off, got most of the junk out of there, let's go ahead and get our wheel cylinder. This guy. Make sure you don't have a bunch of gunk and debris on your brake line here. You don't want to put any of that inside your wheel cylinder. Right. Now we can put him through our hole right here. Make sure we put our new gasket on there. Now we thread this guy on. Okay. Now that we have him back in there, go ahead and reinstall our hardware on the back of our little wheel cylinder here. Get our bolts started. Go ahead and tighten this guy down. Snug. Now that we've got that stuff, go ahead and tighten up our brake line now. Make sure you turn it the right direction. Alright. Brake line, master cylinder, everything is tight and installed. Go ahead and get some of our brake caliper or brake parts grease there. Make sure we get some lube on each one of these bosses here. Don't want to get them. Let those shoes move freely. All right, so now, now that that's done, that's all put back together. Let's go ahead. Like I said, here is whoops, <laughs> our shoe assembly. Take a note of how far this guy's backed out. We're gonna take him off, hit him with our wire wheel as well, get all those threads clean, make sure this guy turns and pivots easily. That way we can adjust our brakes. Make sure you pay attention to the orientation of uh, your shoes. Like this is how they came off here. So you got the nice, long, big shoe was on the back and of course this little guy here with the groove in it was on the front and I don't know if you guys can see but how glazed these pads are yeah, that a lot of that is grease and this little build up right here that is also like grease you guys can see it kind of peeling off so we're gonna get rid of all that And what I mean by get rid of that is I've got a piece of 180 emery cloth here and all I'm going to do is just go over the top of this, not get too crazy, I'm not trying to reshape our shoes, but you can see how it's, it's pulling all that grease off, the grease and the glaze that have been in there for years. And I'm just lightly doing it. Like I said, I'm not trying to change the shape of our shoe. I just want to get this grease and stuff off. That way our shoes have a better chance of biting into our drums, which I will also clean with uh, brake clean and hit real get all the rust and stuff off using 180 grit emery cloth as well as you guys can see here it only takes a few minutes
to knock all of that stuff off there. Now granted, it would have been a lot easier, probably quicker for me if I just bought new shoes, but like I said, all I really want to do is get this thing to be able to move around under its own power right now, move it around. We're going to goof off and have fun with it, don't get me wrong. But I'm going to take some of that money I would spend and put it into a better upgrade for our brakes here, get rid of these drums, convert to disc. You know, some stuff like that. But we have these already. Hoses were fairly cheap. I think they were probably 20 bucks a piece. $27 for our wheel cylinder there. And a little bit of time. We're looking at 100 bucks just to get these brakes working. Moved around. The truck's not stuck or sitting in one spot. All right, now you can see here. All right, and we'll just spray some brake clean on a paper on a rag there to wipe the uh, rest of the residue off. But you can see the difference between our shoes now, grease and glaze and buildup. Just a couple minutes with our lightly lightly sand in the top of that to get it off, and that will bite into our drum a heck of a lot better and give us a little bit more stopping power. So, now that I've taken it all apart, showed you guys what I'm gonna to do to clean it up. I'm gonna go ahead and finish cleaning uh, this other drum, this other pad up as well. Go ahead and spray off the inside of our drum. Hit the, uh, you guys can see up in there. Hit all that stuff with some 180 grit as well. Knock some of the glaze off, get some of that rust and grease out of there. Make this a uh, little bit better. And then we're gonna go ahead, repack some bearings, and put this thing back together. So I'll be right back. All right, everything is cleaned up, ready to be put back together. Um, Go ahead and show you, here's our shoes. Here's our spring there. Here's our adjuster that's put all the way together. This is gonna allow us to put everything on the this axle easier. And like I said before, make sure you took a middle note of how far this is separated so when we get this whole thing back together, we can at least open this up to that much and then do, do our fine adjustments from there. But before I go ahead and put that on, let's go ahead and get you in here so you can see. We got all these guys, we hit them with a wire wheel, got them cleaned up. Go ahead and throw a little bit of uh, brake parts lube on there. Get these guys put in that cup and adjust it or orientate it, to orientate it the way it's supposed to be. So go ahead and get that guy in there as well. So, all right, we got those guys in place. Go ahead and get our brake shoes kind of set up in there. got that we're gonna kind of help hold everything in place as you can see we're gonna start with one side at a time go ahead and get that little pin in get our keeper spring beehive side towards our shoe grab our little cup I find it easier to use just regular pliers you can use however it is but make sure you line that in the same way as your little pin. It's gonna make putting everything together a lot easier. Get your finger back there so you can hold it. Line it up on your spring. Oops. Make sure you get it. Get a nice good grip on that. Go ahead and get her put up into place turn to lock it in so whoops silly me all right come on all right so that guy is locked into place we'll go ahead and pull it up put it up where it's supposed to be up here on our backing plate there we go so now that we got that one in 
go ahead and get the pin in on the front side of our shoe assembly or our brake assembly. Get that guy in place. Make sure we get him lined up where it's supposed to be. Good deal. Again, spring, beehive side down. Get our cup in there and line it up to the little flat spot on our pin. Grab our pliers, push in and turn. So now those guys are completely locked in. Make sure all that is lined up where it goes. Shoes are riding on the plate. There's no obstructions, everything looks good. Now that we are at that point, we can start putting our springs in. Now, here's another neat thing. I've seen guys use screwdrivers as well. Put your spring in, right? Grab a flathead screwdriver, and this works actually very well. It's how I've done it lots of times. Line it up to your little pin there, and just kind of Not like that, but <laughs> make sure you get everything lined up. And don't use a flathead screwdriver where it gets thicker at the end. Use at least one that's the same size all the way down. But I haven't used a screwdriver in quite some time. What I use is that same tool we use to take it off. On the other end, it has this little ball or this little cup. Put it right on your spring just like that. That little cup grabs the end of this guy here and it goes right into place so we got that guy on there same on the other side boom get our cup get that guy lined up now you can see how easy this guy is that little cup once you get it on the pin there it it's really hard for it to slip off so but because I'm sitting here trying to explain how to use that guy. I kind of goofed. <laughs> so this tool also helps it make it easier to so take things apart, especially when you goof, because you got to put this little guy on. And that guy helps keep our shoes from popping out of place. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and put our springs back on. Okay. So see that? See how much, see how easy that was? I goofed up, forgot to put that little retainer piece in there, but this tool here makes it really easy to get the springs on and off. So now that our shoes are back in place, make sure this little guy is all the way in like he's supposed to. This, cool deal. Our shoes move around. Our little pins here are on our shoes correctly from our wheel cylinder. So all of that feels to be good. Before I go any farther, I'm gonna grab my pliers here and just start backing off our adjuster. Get it real close to where it was. And there's a little slot back here too, so if you get once you get everything together, you can always adjust it from there. Say you you forget to do this part, it, it'll take a little while because it's kind of a tight fit back there. Unless you get one of these guys as well, kind of like a little spoon thing there. It goes in that same spot, which and it, it goes in. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. It will help, you can adjust it from the outside there. Do the same with a flathead screwdriver, so. Like I said, go ahead and get this guy. Just it about to where it was. All right, so that is fairly close for right now. Our shoes are riding where they're supposed to be. Now, what I want to do, here's a backing cover here. This goes on first. This is our inner bearing race. It goes in the center of that. This is what our bearing rides on. So we get the bearings inside our drum. 
and then the also that bearing rides on this guy here Maybe you guys have taken apart like a bicycle this looks a lot like the gooseneck bearings or crank bearings how all this rides together so go ahead and swap that guy in there before i do that though and where we're at i'm surprised it wasn't seized together already i'm just going to put a little bit there not a lot i don't need a whole bunch in there i just want enough to keep it from wanting to seize up on me there so that guy goes all the way up uses this to hold this little cover in place so now that that is there I'll go ahead and grab some grease I've already done it on our inner bearing. Our be inner bearing has is greased up inside the drum and has our dust cover on it. So, but I want to make sure that this guy here has plenty of grease on it as well. All right. Got grease on that guy. And go ahead and take your take your rag because you've been touching and banging off of your your brake shoes. Give it one more good wipe with some brake clean. Get whatever little grease you may have transferred onto there off. Hopefully it uh, shows up there on camera, but you can see how it's the gray color. It's more of a natural uh, brake pad color. Now, instead of that dark, greasy, um, well, grease. <laughs> so, all that stuff is off. Shoes are cleaned. Inner cover, inner race, bearing, and dust cover are inside our drum as well. Go ahead and can never be too careful, but I have cleaned this probably half a dozen times. Just do it one more good wipe. Go ahead and put that guy in there. Kind of listen to. This has a light drag on it already, so I'm not going to adjust that adjuster out anymore. But now we have come to our outer bearing. Make sure that that guy is completely wiped off and cleaned up. And you can, I'm going to pack this. There you go. See how clean that is. And basically, what I'll do, grab your grease, grab the back side of your little brain there, see how it's all open. Just get yourself a big old scoop right on the back side there. Get it all, all up in there. And then just, uh, Take your finger, push it inside, kind of work it all the way inside. You're going to have a little bit left over, just like that. And now what I'll take is just kind of drag it in there like you would a normal like tapered or Timken bearing. Just kind of try to push as much up inside that void, inside the backside of that bearing as possible. Okay. You're going to want, you're going to see it too, kind of pack up around the balls there as well, your bearings. And that is good. So, I've always liked just hand packing these particular ones. It just feels better. The other one bearings, the Timken or the taper bearings, I have that little tool. And that just makes it really, really quick. I don't really kind of, I don't really trust that tool on these guys. I want to make sure all that grease is up inside in between each one of those bearings and starting to push out the backside. And once you got all of that done, Grab yourself another little bit of grease on your finger and get it up inside on that race. Make sure you got plenty of grease in that race. There we go. Put in our roller bearing. Make sure it sits up in there. Now here is the other part. You have this little guy right here. This is the outer or inner, inner outer. <laughs> the other little bearing race, you got lots of grease on your hand still. Make sure this little guy is completely packed with grease as well. Slide him up in there. Yep. 
Boom. Behind that guy, we have this other little washer. You can see it has that tang there to help locate it. It helps keep it from spinning. And that goes up against that, that other little race. And now that we have our nut, go ahead and put our nut on. Everybody has a lot of different theories on preload to these bearings. Uh, new bearings require more preload than old bearings, and well, these are <laughs> old bearings. So, when it comes to wheel bearing or bearings like this, what I'll do is get it on there so it has like zero play, and basically just go make it snug, back it off, and then snug to the next hole and that should be or our next area the next place where you can put a cotter key it should be right in here so come on you little silly head it's in there but yeah I just tighten it yeah tighten it loosen it that helps get that grease off that race get it pushed and then snug it up again to our next Keeper, it should be right in. There it is, right there. So, boom. Okay. There is no wiggle. It's nice and oh, tie rods. <laughs> but the bearing feels good. It's got a. It's got a nice. It's got a slight. Slight little drag on, which means it has it has a little bit of preload on it, which is good. Like I said, I don't like putting a whole lot of preload on old bearings. So, but now that we got that guy in there, grab our cotter key or our cotter pin, fold it over. If a lot of you guys have been with me for a while, know that I like to bend one up over the top and bend the other one down against our nut. Instead of just having both folded over the front, like one on top, one on bottom. Everybody has their opinion. But now that that is in there, and all snug and ready to go, grab your little cup. Put a little, you know, get some grease in there. Put it towards the bottom, or it doesn't really matter where you put it. Because when it gets a little bit of warmth or whatever, the grease is going to get become more, more, uh, it's going to kind of want to flow into a, where it's supposed to be or where it needs to be, so... Doesn't hurt having a whole bunch in there. Knock our little dust cover back on. Give her a good little turn. So now you can hear, you hear that on the inside there? That is a slight drag, but we're gonna want a little bit more. And this is why I said, pay attention to how far that little adjuster was adjusted out. Because doing this this way would take quite some time so now that we've got that there I get our little fork get it adjusted thing about this way too like the other kind of the self-adjusting ones or has that little arm keeps it from backing up this one if you get it too tight you can go back the other way but these do require like every time you service the vehicle to get in here and adjust your brakes So now you can hear it's got a slight drag on it. So now when we go to pressure up our brakes, or bleed our brakes, or hit the brakes, then they are there. So now wheel bearings are packed, wheel cylinders are replaced. 
I'm going to go find someone to help me bleed these brakes. And then once they're bled, I'll have this truck back on the ground and we'll be right back. We are back in the shop, and I have got to tell you, this is was probably one of the shortest and funnest test drives I have ever had because this truck moved under its own power after many, many, many years. Granted, it has no front end. It's got a hot-wired uh, fan up front there to help keep the engine cool. Just ran the power wires over to the battery. Makeshift throttle cable, pull string. <laughs> Brakes worked pretty decent. They need a little bit more fine adjustment. I need to probably adjust my pedal a little bit more, get a little bit more throw on that. Maybe adjust the ones here on the wheels, give them a little bit more. But other than that, it stops, um, which is really, really cool. These trucks, if you don't know, have the uh, brake master. Everything's underneath the uh, cab. It's on the frame rail. Under the cab, you got to pull a little hole in the floor to check and fill. We got rid of all that junk when we cut out these cross members to fit this big block here. Found a whole bracket tree assembly, a bracket assembly on eBay. Of course, I stole my booster off my red truck. <laughs> got a new one coming though, but we're going to upgrade that one later. But anyway, everything, we moved everything up here to the firewall, so now we don't have to crawl up underneath the truck to check it. Everything's easily accessible. Ran new brake lines to the front, new rubber lines, pulled our wheels off, repacked the bearings, cleaned the pads, cleaned the backing plate, new brake lines. Basically rebuilt all that stuff up there, bled our brakes, and well, there we are. So I am super excited. Cannot wait to, uh, I mean, I'm looking forward to all the, everything that's to come with this truck. When I, uh, I want to get, I need to get the exhaust done. I need to get that fixed. I need to finish cleaning up the sheet metal so we can get most of the sheet metal back on. We need to clean up some wiring. Uh, transmission needs to be wired up as well. Uh, if you're, uh, this is a 4L80E transmission and it has no power or anything going to it. So. When that happens, those transmissions default to second, third, and reverse. So it's not really, really good to be driving around on them like that all the time. But this was such a short trip, I was not worried about it. I uh, need to get that fuel tank. I need to come up with another fuel system out the back of the truck or get that one cleaned out a lot better because it clogged up my fuel filter, ran this car out of fuel, and it took me a while to get it back here. But with the help of this little guy here, and um, a whole lot of patience. <laughs> we managed to get it back up in here. But anyways, that's besides the point. This truck backed out of the shop. It went down the driveway, came back up into the driveway and pulled itself into the shop and stopped. So that is awesome. Can't wait to get more done on this truck. But I got to get cleaned up now. Start to try to get ready for one more project, hopefully before I go back to work. And when I do go back to work, it's going to be for a much longer time this time. Kind of got to be moving things around. So videos might be a little thin, but I will do my best to keep up with everything. So you guys leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this whole thing. Um, if you didn't watch the last video, please go back, watch the last video. Make sure you like that video. Watch the whole thing. Follow the instructions because I will be giving that carburetor, fuel pump, fuel filter, and a, sh and a piece of fuel line 
away. So you got to watch the whole video, follow all the instructions. But huh. again, you guys, like I said, I got to end this one right here. Got to do a little bit of cleanup. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging out. Subscribe if you have not already. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think. Definitely share this with your friends and continue to help me grow. So thank you guys again for hanging out. Thank you for watching. And I'll catch you on the next one.